And what's up, everybody? It's your boy Uchi, and um, back again. Once again, how y'all doing today? Today's a little different. We're actually not reacting for once. Well, we kind of are, but we are mostly discussing the recent events, as in rumors and speculation that has been going on in the fighting game community. And what might I be talking about? Marvel vs. Capcom 4. Now this is a game that literally all started off of a 4. It was later to be proven that image was fake. But out of that came some truth. And thanks to Polygon, they actually have sources that, that they are relying on heavily in saying that Marvel vs. Capcom 4 is coming in 2017 i will get into how i feel about the game but let's just go over what we know before i give you guys my thoughts where i think this can go what should happen and to kind of put some ease on those that are freaking out over some of the the news that came along with this announcement so let's get right into it So like I said, Polygon.com was actually the website that started the official it's coming type of rumor on their website. Saying that the game is coming out in 2017 and that it will be unveiled this weekend at the Sony Experience alongside the Capcom Cup Street Fighter V tournament that's taking place this freaking weekend. So there's going to be a lot of things unveiled. And this just might be one of them. Going alongside with this bit of news is the unfortunate side of this announcement. Marvel vs. Capcom 4 is going to lean heavily towards the MCU side of things when it comes to Marvel. And if you don't know what the MCU side of things means, that's referring to the Marvel Cinematic Universe. That is literally characters and heroes, villains that we see in the theaters in all of the Marvel films today. Which means no X-Men, no Deadpool, and no Fantastic Four. Doctor Doom, because no one really cares about Fantastic Four. Like I said, I will go into this and how I feel about that after all of what we already know is stated instead of having characters from these three franchises that have been in the game since i don't know its birth especially the x-men and fantastic four characters especially the x-men characters you know kind of being that the game started off of children of the atom that was the first marvel game without it being marvel that was the seed that grew into this huge tree where it is broken as hell anyway expect to see characters like group ant-man characters that have been in the marvel uni cinematic universe that we have not seen in the marvel's capcom game probably other guardians of the galaxy characters yo even black panther and like i said the announcement is slated to be unveiled this weekend during the sony experience check out the sony experience on twitch or on facebook off of playstation's account going on december 3rd to the 4th now let me revisit a point that i had made before that's supposed to be true if you ask me this is actually a really hit or miss with this upcoming game no x-men characters especially x-men characters i mean taking out guys like wolverine and magneto especially that's very very interesting and an interesting move on their part because you're taking away staple characters that have literally been in the entire franchise marvel vs capcom started with children of the atom so how i don't to me taking out staple characters like that is just really strange and i can understand the direction that they're trying to go in they're trying to push their marvel properties when it comes to the cinematic universe but you're taking out characters like wolverine magneto sentinel phoenix then you got a popular character such as deadpool and then a doctor doom to me that's 
kind of ballsy, but I digress. Now, obviously, since this is the only bit that we know so far, there is some good and there is some bad. So I briefly just want to kind of go over how having no X-Men characters can be good and how they can be bad. Uh, let me just go over the bad stuff. I feel like that is probably the dumbest thing you could even do like i want to use this example i might get heat for it but you know what? it's getting cold i'm going to use super smash brothers as an example smash brothers has is a game a crossover game with most of all of nintendo's properties you have super mario donkey kong fire emblem pokemon just to name a few that is like saying i'm gonna take out mario and luigi marvel vs capcom who do you have at the forefront of your game you got ryu representing capcom and you got wolverine representing the marvel side wolverine has been a staple you know what obviously cyclops he used to be that forefront but not anymore that man wolverine he's in there and now you're gonna take him out along with magneto one of the best characters i want to say in the mvc universe this man is like on everybody's team next to dr doom even though he's not no x-men character he belongs to a series that is under fox fantastic four without them how you gonna put doom in there obviously somewhat of a stretch can't wait to see what people have to say about that. But it is very valid. The good that I see out of this, okay? Aside from taking away your staple characters, this actually does give a lot of room for characters that have yet to see what it is like to be in that Marvel limelight. You have guys like Ant-Man. You have the guys from Guardians of the Galaxy. You have a, a fan favorite villain in Loki. Imagine him taking the, the mantle that Doctor Doom or Magneto wants to. I mean, let's be honest, I would not deny my man Loki. But then you might ask, well, who would replace Deadpool? Squirrel Girl? I mean, she's not in no Marvel film yet, but she breaks the fourth wall and she's defeated Thanos and Doctor Doom. Twice. If you want a comical character to represent Marvel, go ahead and just put in Squirrel Girl. This gives new light and new opportunity for characters that have, we have not seen, that X-Men characters have been taken up. But you know what? Who's to blame them? X-Men is basically like Street Fighter when it comes to the Capcom side. They got a lot of characters from Street Fighter representing Capcom. Meanwhile, they have a lot of X-Men guys representing Marvel. But the same thing can be said for the Avengers, because there's way more Avengers, I feel like, in the game. In the game, not in the comics. Calm yourself down. How we can remedy this for the future. And like Street Fighter V, I suggest that this game take a page right out of that and have seasoned DLC. If you go ahead and say officially at the Sony experience or maybe later on after this game is out there and it's officially known that it's happening and you say, hey, we're doing a Marvel vs. Capcom 4, but if you don't see Wolverine, we're warning you now, no Fox Marvel characters. So that means no Wolverine, no Deadpool, blah, 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 blah. And then everyone goes freaking out. They're like, oh my God, they're not going to be in the game, blah, blah, blah. My teams are screwed up. But that is just for now. That is what the beauty of DLC is for. And here's how it's going to work. Have a season DLC just like Street Fighter V. Have a character release a month in Street Fighter. Well, let's have two or three or four in Marvel vs. Capcom. MVC is supposed to be a big rostered game. So why not have DLC and release the characters that were taken out and bring them back in. Take another page out of Smash Bros. They got rid of Mewtwo. They got rid of my boy Roy. They got rid of Lucas. And you know what happened? They all came back again once again. In addition to characters like Ryu and Cloud, which I will be getting into. Have a DLC pack, incrementally release, give us back these characters because for them to not include their staples is just a huge mistake. Let's not forget the fans outrage when Street Fighter 3 was initially announced to feature no original characters from the previous games, meaning no Ryu, no Chun-Li, no Ken. Well, guess what? They changed that real quick when people say, I ain't gonna play it. I ain't gonna play it. You know what they did? They said, all right, fine. We'll give y'all Ryu, Chun-Li, Ken, Akuma. Everyone's like, okay. You got yourself a deal. When it comes to this, I mean, I don't really know if they can. we can get away with something like that. Who knows? 
we should definitely voice our opinions and make it known that if if that is something that is such an importance the x-men characters definitely i feel like personally in my opinion I definitely feel like they should be in the game. If they're not there at launch, I'm not going to leave out the fact that, you know, it's a possibility they'll be back. That's what DLC is for. That's how things are done nowadays, you know. Pretend like, oh, we're taking something away, but we're just going to give it back to you later. Hello, and, that, and that, that brings hype. That brings excitement, which leads me into my final point. I am a casual when it comes to Marvel vs. Capcom. I have supported the game and its franchise ever since the very first Versus game that I ever played in that being X-Men vs. Street Fighter. This was Marvel prequel, I guess if you will. I am a casual and I play these games for fun, I play them with my friends, I will never compete because I am not trying to get one grab, start, select, whatever, quit, you got the round. I'm not trying to do that, coach. When it comes to getting your guaranteed pre-orders and guaranteed buys, what is one thing that gets people to play your game? Well, this might not be a 100% guarantee, but this definitely gets people interested and it definitely gets people way more interested than not interested at all. And here it is guest characters if you think about it and i'm gonna try to explain as best as i can in a short amount of time but i'm going to reference smash yet again because it just so happens that the points just line up i'm sorry you have a character like ryu brought into smash you could say that oh well street fighter 2 used to be on nintendo so there you go there's your loophole okay ryu is now a part of smash brothers what about a character like cloud well final fantasy used to be on nintendo but that was only up until the seventh game one through six used to be on nintendo systems then seven hit that disc life on the playstation competitor so who did they have to tickle in order to get Cloud and Smash. Whoever did what to who, it happened. A huge, important part of video game history is in Smash. When it comes to these guest characters from other platforms. Now, when it comes to Marvel vs. Capcom, who am I going for? What am I referring to? Well, this is for the Marvel side of things. And I have two requests. One, this is a little more than likely than the second request that I have I'm about to reveal. But this character has his own comics, is under the same umbrella that Marvel shares. Everyone loves him. He's a villain and would destroy the whole roster without even touching them. Who could I be talking about? Who? 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 I'm talking about my man, Darth Vader. <laughs> Vader in the game and I will guarantee go to GameStop go to Amazon don't matter where Best Buy how you doing I will pre-order pay that ish right now you put Darth Vader in the game you will have people like me that will play this game out of straight hype and excitement I will force choke you from across the screen I will force combo you from across the screen I will force level three you from across the screen and you won't even see it coming. But you know what? It's Marvel, baby. Put Vader in the game. You want more hype? You want to really come down when your fans and say, you want to you wanna start with a boom? Put Vader in the game. Put him in the game. I'll tell you this right now. You got people like L.I. Joe. Shout out to my boy, L.I. Joe. He will make sure if there's even a hint that Vader is possibly even in this game, this game is going to be bigger than Street Fighter. It just might. To further that, why? Why Vader? Why? He's not even in a, in a Marvel movie. Okay, but like I said, under the same umbrella. And that umbrella is Disney. Disney owns everything. Disney owns LucasArts, Disney owns Marvel, and Disney owns Disney. And because of that, we have possibilities. Because Disney owns Marvel and Disney owns LucasArts, the fact that Marvel and LucasArts can have a crossover partnership in, the, in, in a form like a comic book, why wouldn't they be able to have this kind of crossover for a video game. It's a video game. I'm not saying put Vader in the next Avengers, which would be really interesting. But I'm saying do something that's realistic in the sense of what we're talking about here, a video game. I mean, for crying out loud, if they can have Attack on Titan with the uh, Avengers just for fun, this is this not fun? Is Marvel not a, a fun? Well, I mean, what? People do call it a one player game, but come on now. 
put Vader in the game. Now, here's my second request. This is a stretch, okay? This is like a loophole in a loophole, all right? You have a game like Kingdom Hearts that is Disney and Square Enix. Okay. But see, now that Disney has Marvel, there's all those rumors going around that Marvel just might end up being in Kingdom Hearts 3. And with that being thought about, that could also mean Vader could appear in that game too. So why not take a character from Kingdom Hearts like Sephiroth? Are you kidding me? I'm not even gonna go in on that one because you know what? I'm not trying to get completely hated and trashed on the internet right now. I just like to have fun and be all hyped because you know what? That's another character. If they put Sephiroth in the game, come on now. They put Cloud in Smash, man. They could put Sephiroth in Marvel's Capcom. It's all under one umbrella, even though it's not Marvel Marvel. I mean, hell, if Big Brother up there wanted to, he'll put Mickey Mouse in the damn game. But let me know what you guys think of all this Marvel talk. I hope I made some kind of sense and alleviated some of your worries when it comes to the X-Men characters not being in the game. I mean, they have good reason as to why it may not happen, but I have some further reasoning as to how they can still make it or be in it at a later time. So, with that being said, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter. Let me know what you guys think about Marvel vs. Capcom 4, if it's even going to happen. And stay fresh to play fresh. I'll see y'all next time.